Had a very good game, a career high 18 points, 11 rebounds for her second career double double. So Merritt, the sophomore out of Texas, someone playing with a lot of confidence. Florida comes in one and one on the season. NC State at one and one, and there are some familiar faces on this Florida team, and Kiki Smith and Lavender Briggs. We're ready Sunday afternoon basketball. Are you ready, stuff? I'm ready. I have a feeling. You've Let's been ready. go. You are ready at 8 a.m. for the tip. That's right. Opening tip controlled by Florida. We're underway. Here at Kayao Court. Kiki Smith. Back outside to Merritt, who showed some outside touch last time out. Ooh, Smith, that's what she does so well. That little floater has dropped a time or two in her great Florida career. Kiki Smith. Reyna Perez with Kai Crutchfield, Jakia Brown Turner, Kayla Jones, Elisa Kunane, the starting five for NC State. Jordan Merritt, little contact outside the three-point line for the first foul of the afternoon. Florida starting five, led by Kiki Smith, the grad student who's been battling an injury, who had such a great finish last year. Second team all-conference, Lavender Briggs, of course, now nine months removed from a foot injury. She's not at 100% yet. Mentioned Merritt. Nino Cards in the starting five, along with Faith Dutes on the inside. Crutchfield. Right away, you're going to see Florida get after it on the defensive end. They want to be aggressive. We saw NC State working on their pressure releases today, and that's what they have to do, get touches inside to Kunane early. Gators foul, number 25, Dudes. Dudes so already a couple of fouls on Florida. I mentioned last time out they lost to Towson 87-70. They were outscored. The Gators were 37-20. In the first quarter, Towson was 7 8 of 8 on three, so they've got to come out with a little bit more intensity as Kunane gets her first points. NC State and shoot around today, really working on looking at those slips. Kunane gets a nice, easy bucket there. Faith Duke rolls to the basket for her first two. Nine total points in her first two games. She's battling an injury in the preseason, a shoulder problem. She's got it wrapped up pretty well here in the starting five for Florida. Florida gets a stop, and here is Lavender Briggs. This is what Florida wants to do, much different than they had been in the past. They want to push in transition, but push with poise, get good looks. Smith couldn't finish Perez in transition. Chantry to Kayla Jones. She, too, working her way back from injury. And you can see what an impact she can have because she is so crafty. First team all-conference a year ago. Well, Kayla Jones is a, not just a glue player, but somebody who can give really good production inside. Kanane, one and done for Florida. Crutchfield for three. I love what NC State's doing right away. They're establishing inside. They're getting paint touches. They're attacking off the bounce. And then they're taking the open threes off of the driving kick. Merritt tries for three. Kiki Smith fights on the offensive glass and was fouled. So Smith will go to the free throw line to shoot a couple. Her first. First on the Already some trouble on the glass for Florida, so they'll bring some size in with the six foot four floor Tonders. Faith Duke will Florida head Tonders. to the bench, and yeah, Kiki Smith will go to the line to shoot a couple. Smith on the line. Kiki was limited against Towson, just had eight points and three assists in that loss to the Tigers. Westmore coming off a win, win number 749 in his long, successful career. And he has got it going here at NC State, two-time defending ACC tournament champions. Brown Turner. Perez on the pull-up. Good fight on the glass, but Florida had it for a moment. Crutchfield takes it away. And another whistle against the Gators. 
And already that's three fouls here in the first quarter. Kelly Ray Finley, the interim head coach for Florida. We'll have more on how she was moved into this position coming up in just a bit. She's really done a good job keeping this group together. Kiki Smith to Briggs. Yes. And Briggs finishes. Lavender Briggs is a player who struggled offensively getting into a rhythm as well. Getting easy scores in transition is going to be important for Florida. Foot injury was February 15th, and she is still working up to full strength. Hasn't been able to practice, hasn't been a full go in a lot of ways. Turnover, NC State, here come the Gators. Smith comes up short, but Briggs has the long rebound. will try a three and Briggs good job to get around Brown Turner's box out attempt and she was fouled she'll go to the free throw line Florida doing a really good job of crashing the offensive glass and we saw it in the first half for NC State against Wofford as well giving up second chance opportunities and if you're Florida you've got to take advantage of those well, it was a slow start for NC State against Wofford to open up the preseason WNIT. It was a five-point game at halftime. Wes Moore told us this morning that we said, well, what was, was halftime like? And, you know, you've been there. You've done that. He said, well, some of the paint peeled off. And then we asked a couple of his players just to corroborate that story. And uh, Jakia Brown-Turner and Elisa Kunain both raised eyebrows when we said, what was that halftime speech like? Oh, a aggressive. Little aggressive. Was one. Yeah, a little aggressive. Aggress but he wasn't thrilled with how they came out in the first half. And here they are down by two in the first half of game number three. Well, and they both said it's it's what was needed. Uh, Elisa Kunain talked about, well, we've said we're a second half team, but we have to be consistent in the first half to get to where we want to go. Diamond Johnson into the game for NC State. Rutgers transfer. And Florida has been assessed team foul number four. Well, we were both on that call, the officiated call. They're going to call the hand check every time. They want to establish pace and rhythm on the offensive end of the floor. Florida's going to have to adjust. Trying to feed it inside to Kinane. You can see how Florida's trying to deny her with three Gators all around. Jones. Crutchfield, shot clock to four. Crutchfield rattles in another three. Again, getting paint touches for NC State off the bounce, kicking back out for those open threes. I thought Crutchfield hesitated a little bit. She could have taken that in rhythm, but knocked it down anyway. She usually doesn't hesitate. No, she usually doesn't. 47% from outside the arc last year. Well, this is a team that loves to shoot the three, and getting that three in rhythm is really important. Turnover by the Gators. That is their first. The ball is going to go inside and backside right there. Kai Crutchfield knocking it down. Three-year starter for the Wolfpack. All-tourney team last year. Held the 10 points in the first two games. Off to a good start here against Florida out of the SEC. Matchup of ACC and SEC teams here in the preseason WNIT. Really good looking in this 1-4 high set. Jones going to take the three. Also had Perez coming off the backside. Smith batted away. Another chance here for Merritt, who knocks down a three-pointer. One of the benefits of having Jordan Merritt on the floor is her versatility. Not only is she able to score it inside, but able to stretch the defense from three. It's a tough matchup for a big. Leah Weish into the game for Florida. Kinane. And that is going to be foul number five on Florida. So free throws when we come back to Reynolds Coliseum. Close in the opening minutes in Raleigh. Her first, fifth, Kelly Ray Finley is a familiar face on the Florida bench, but now she is the interim head coach. She took over on July 16th when Cam Neubauer resigned after that resignation. Allegations came to light. You see them detailed there. And just watching how Kelly has tried to keep things moving forward here for Florida, which is very challenging when you're 
see stories like this, and now she's put in an interim role. How do you think she has handled it? Because this is not an easy situation for her, or certainly not for these players, more importantly. It's not an easy situation, but it does make it easier for the players when you have some continuity. Kelly Ray Finley's been there as an assistant coach. She is now a new role in interim head coach, but it does give the players consistency. They're going to play a little bit different system, you know, but, but one of the main things that Kelly Ray Finley talked to us about was just, you know, allowing these players to enjoy playing basketball, getting them out there, keeping them together. I mean, the way the transfer portal is right now, to be able to keep this group together, bring them all back, and try to move forward collectively is really important. People may remember that back in your playing days was just like five minutes ago. Yeah, five minutes, yeah. Maybe six minutes ago. <laughs> but it ended with cutting down the nets and winning a national championship. But to get to that point, you had three different head coaches, so you and your teammates had to really adjust to different things as you went through your Purdue career. Right, three coaches in four years. And the thing that, that was so important was the transition to Carolyn Peck, who was an assistant coach, who took us to the national championship game. And, and it was really important just to keep camaraderie together. And I think Carolyn pushed the right buttons and, well, I mean, Absolutely. It, it helped that you averaged 20 points a game and won the Wade <laughs> Trophy senior year. But, the, you know, that's just an afterthought. Nice look. Kanane to the basket. Can't get it. Oh, but she's not done. Took away from Briggs and then finds Johnson cutting for two. Good job by Kanane sticking with it. Yeah, really good second effort by Kanane. And I think that's a good look for Diamond Johnson. Diamond Johnson is a dynamic offensive player. She didn't play as well as she wanted to against South Carolina, but trying to find a rhythm as a new player coming into an established NC State core. Madison Hayes into the game out of the timeout, the transfer from Mississippi State. Mara tried to drop it down. Kunane saved it for Crutchfield. Perez. Johnson had it blocked. Diamond Johnson had the extra pass to Kanane right there. You got to make that. This is kind of a microcosm here as Briggs couldn't hold on to Kanane. May have tried to force it, but instead, this is something she's going to have to do all season long is let's get others involved. I know that may be an extreme example of that, but that's something that you discussed with her today. There's so much pressure and expectations on this floor, this NC State team to make it to the Final Four. Kanane can't do it all herself. She's got to do her part, but they've got to find a way to make all these many pieces fit together. Well, every scouting report is going to be aimed at keeping Alisa Kanane off balance. They're going to send doubles from multiple places. They're going to mix it up on her, her ability to handle it with poise, find her open teammates, get them great shots. I mean, you know, Westmore talked about it. You got to pass up good shots for great shots. And Elisa Kunane's touches have opportunities to get everyone great shots on the floor. Zippy Broughton has come on for Florida transfer from Rutgers. So she is on the floor right now against her former Rutgers teammate, Di Diamond Johnson. Here's Alberte Rimdahl, freshman from Denmark. Rimdahl does what she's been doing and attacks the basket. She's been kind of a, I know she's from Finland, but she's been the Swiss Army knife for this Florida <laughs> team. Does a little bit of everything. She has, and Florida's going to run that, a lot of that. <laughs> Florida's going to run a lot of that high ball screen action, and, and with Kiki Smith being a, a little bit, you know, under the weather in terms of her health, Rimdahl's going to get a lot of touches. I apologize to our Danish viewers and friends. <laughs> That's a confused thing. Kanane knocked away by Duke, but into the hands of Hayes. Perez. There's Kanane fighting on the glass again. I just love the way that NC State is attacking the paint. They're attacking it with penetrating passes. They're attacking it off the bounce. Now they're trying to extend the defense a little bit, and it pays off as Hayes and Perez team up to turn over Rindal. And a timeout being called here by Florida to talk things over as NC State has turned things around here in the first quarter. They were down by two at the first media timeout. They're up by five here in the first. We talked about the top of the telecast, Steph White. 
Lisa Kinane, seven points, five rebounds so far in her eight minutes of work. Well, she's been aggressive with the ball. She's been aggressive on the offensive glass, getting her early touches, making the right decision, making the right play. Five of the nine rebounds so far for NC State. Off the Florida turnover and the Florida timeout. Johnson, Crutchfield wide open. That's another three for Kai Crutchfield, her third of the quarter. There's so much movement in the offense for NC State, and being patient in that offense is key, getting wide open shots. Briggs gets a wide open look. That won't drop and knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Hayes. Good fight on the glass by Manu de Oliveira. Good to see her back on the court for Florida after she was unable to join the team last year because of COVID travel restrictions, was down in Brazil. And Manu made it back to the States in June. Fake Duke. Briggs has to take a deep three. Crutchfield has it. Briggs got a hand in there and is called for the foul. It'll be two free throws on the other end. Now we talked about Manu. They, they tried to stay connected to her even though she was stuck in Brazil. They had this very nicely produced cardboard cutout. A lot of zooms back and forth. The cardboard cutout right there cheering for her teammates on the bench. But what an amazing story. The, the things that Manu had to do to keep herself in shape. She had to get creative, you know, and, and to be able to stay connected, not only in a, in a, from that distance, but in a COVID year, is a tribute to this staff, to Kelly Ray Finley, to making sure that they keep this team together. I heard a lot of those stories during the lockdown where you couldn't get to a gym. So Manu, we were told, filled up paint buckets with concrete and was mm -hmm. doing some workouts to Trying to stay in as good a shape as possible. Was playing some ball in Brazil as well. So back here in the States. Great D, great rotation. A, she's had a really good first quarter. Camille Hobby into the game for NC State. Crutchfield doing it on both ends of the floor so far. Final minute of the first. Perez, nifty little fake to get free. Reina Perez is just so poised under pressure. Plays with such a good pace. Hobby picks up the foul on the other end. Final minute of the first quarter. Ten unanswered points for NC State. Strong close here for the first quarter as the cards will go to the free throw line. Florida struggling from outside the three-point line. NC State has dialed up the defense a little bit. They've made it very difficult to Florida, for Florida to get into what they want to do. And then when Florida settled for threes, they're one for seven from outside the three-point line. Well, Florida's strength is getting, getting to the basket. NC State really turned it up on the defensive end, forcing those jump shots. Great look. Yeah, that's Perez to Hobby who is fouled. Again, just, just the pace that Reina Perez plays with. She makes the right pass on time, on target. That's a second personal foul on Faith Dutes. So she will check out, and Tatiana Weish will come into the game. Now Florida is a team, and, and Kelly Ray Finley talked to us about this, about changing their defensive identity. You know, they really want to be more aggressive, really want to get after it. You have to be able to do that without putting players to the foul line, giving players easy opportunities to get buckets. You know, against Towson, Towson shot 33 free throws. So now you have to be disciplined while you're being aggressive and changing that identity on the defensive end. Well, it feels like more the same here in this game because Florida's already committed eight fouls here in the first quarter. The Oliveira shut off by Hobby. Bounced out of bounds, and it'll be NC State basketball shot clock off. 15.8 to go in the quarter, and the Oliveira slow to get up. So 
So Manu will stay in the game. Let's see what happened here. Yeah, took the tumble on the drive, trying to get around Hobby. Diamond Johnson's really going to work that middle pick and roll as the clock runs down. Good look. And a foul is called. Now we'll send Hobby to the free throw line. And Florida's aggressive on the defensive end. They're going to stay in that show. And Diamond Johnson and Reina Perez both making the right read, dropping it off to the bigs. State continues to pick up points at the free throw line. Now seven of nine this quarter. Johnson slows down Kiki Smith and that will do it. Slow start but a good finish for NC State led by their defense and also the three point shooting from Kai Crutchfield. Three threes in the first quarter, and NC State puts 29 on the board in the first. Good quarter for Elisa Kunane and her NC State teammates. Kunane with seven points, five rebounds. She was fouled four times. So back to your point when Westmore talked about us, we got to start inside and try to find things there and then kick it out if we want find Crutchfield and she ended up with 10 points. Yeah, Crutchfield was really good as well. And, and I, what I like about NC State, and Westmore said this, look, I like to shoot the three as much as anybody. And against Wofford, they shot a lot early. Now they're getting it inside. They're attacking off the bounce. They're getting inside out. They're getting great shots instead of settling for good shots. Brown Turner to Isaiah James, freshman into the game. And, and Florida changing it up on the defensive end of the floor, going to two, three zone and trying to get a little bit more aggressive on the ball. They found the open shooter was the freshman James. Second chance here for NC State. A little hot pass from Johnson trying to get it to Hobby off the mark. Really, that was the key part of the turnaround for NC State was they were turning Florida over, turning those points, those turnovers into points. Yeah, getting more aggressive on the defensive end, really cutting down on those driving lanes, forcing Florida to make the extra pass. Or taking an outside shot, which is what Tatiana Weich had to do right there. Hobby. Good little move by the junior from Jacksonville. And what a luxury for Westmore. You have Hobby who can come in and be a power post. You have Kunane who you can move around, play a little bit of finesse as well. Oh, Madison Hayes with the clean block. You can just sense the defensive intensity picking up for NC State, really trying to make a statement on the defensive end of the floor. Nothing coming easy right now for Florida. Numbers the other way for NC State. Johnson for three. Offensive rebound comes down to James. Brown Turner gets her first points. Another turnover for Florida. Johnson works with Hobby. Got her, got to go to the basket right there. Well, Hobby's playing shoeless. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she has her ankle wrap, but she's down the one shoe, so a sock and a shoe. That's why she didn't roll. Maybe that's why she didn't roll to the basket. That's right. I can't do the pick and roll with just one I, shoe. I can't plant right there. Or oh, she lost a shoe right in front of us. That's why I didn't see it. Yeah, that's going to really impact your, your cutting ability. <laughs> yeah, yeah, her ability to change directions quickly impacted. Westmore really high on Camille Hobby. He loves what she brings, wants to find a way to get her more minutes. I think I gave the previous NC State hoop to Brown Turner. It was James, the freshman, who scored nine points in her collegiate debut Friday. So 
getting your first points today. NC State on top by 18. Really making it tough for Lavender Briggs. When Lavender Briggs is right, she is one of the very best players in the country, not just in the SEC. She's explosive. She can score in a variety of ways. She's underrated on the defensive end as well, but the question is when will she be right? Because that foot injury has really slowed down what she's been able to do. It hinders not only her ability to move, but it hinders her ability to practice. And she's one of those players who's a gym rat who likes to get in a rhythm by being in the gym. And she, quite frankly, she's just limited to how much pressure she can put on that foot. Really struggled in the last game against Towson, was three of 16 from the field. She's one of six here today. Johnson made something out of what was shaping up to be nothing, but not going to doubt Diamond Johnson. She's had a good first half. She's got six. Answered back by Florida. First points in the quarter go to Kiki Smith. Perez open three. Kanane got tangled up with Christina Moore. Who picks up the foul? When you have a player like Diamond Johnson and Perez on the floor together, both of them can create for themselves, both of them can create for others. Have that point guard mentality, but also able to score the basketball. This, this NC State team is one of the most balanced teams in the country. Their offensive efficiency, if you look at the synergy ratings, as Debbie Antonelli loves to use our synergy <laughs> ratings, right? They're excellent in every category. So you have to pick your poison defensively. Got to use a Debbie Antonelli reference. We're at NC State. Well, I mean, it's the only regret is we waited to the second quarter. That's to do true. It. That's the truth. Do that yes. In the first quarter. Sorry, Deb. So when you're looking at, you know, for someone who doesn't know what the synergy ratings are, what are the things that you're looking for? Some of the things that stand out to you for what NC State does. Well, the, the thing that stands out to me is just offensively, they're rated excellent in almost every category. They're balanced. They're efficient. They're effective, they're patient. So when you're thinking about how are you going to play them, how are you going to scout them defensively, what do you take away? And, and, and most teams are going to try to start with Kunain early. You want to play the percentages, but this is also a great three-point shooting team as well. So you have to try to keep them off balance. You have to try to take them out of a rhythm, because when they're in a the rhythm, they're very, very tough to stop. They never really got into rhythm against South Carolina. They battled back in that game, got within a point in the second half, but they were never able to go in front. Now, you're playing against South Carolina. It's right. about a deep, talented team. That's and an excellent defensive right team. Yes. I mean, an excellent defensive team. They, South Carolina has always been terrific on that end of the floor, and they turned it up against NC State. They will take you out of what you want to do. And then in game two, we talked about against Wofford, things weren't clicking. And mm -hmm. Little fire and brimstone at halftime seems to get NC State going. There you go, all day long. They're going to have that pick and roll all day long. Florida's ready for it, though. Moore stood her ground, and here come the Gators. Broughton with the push. Moore can't get the floater. Kanane's got a rebound. Had it knocked away. 35-19 in the second. Every Saturday, the huddle, Jordan Cornett, Eric McLean, E.J. Manuel, Mark Rick, they get you ready for ACC football. Previewing all the games, keeping you updated on all things ACC football. 10 a.m. Eastern right here on ACCN and the ESPN app. One app, one tap. Today on the offensive glass. Controlled by the Gators. Briggs. Tonders. Smith will try a deep three. And knock it down. Kiki Smith. Kiki Smith. Two of six from outside the three-point arc in her first two games of the season. 
It's a three, and Florida has now outscored NC State here in this quarter. 7-0 run. James, step back three. Well, that's going to be a shot that's going to be reviewed favorably in the film room by Wes Moore. <laughs> I think if you take the first one in rhythm, <laughs> but to take the little sidestep bounce and... James, the freshman, tries to feed Kinane, and things get a little sloppy here, so let's see if Florida can take advantage of NC State losing their rhythm a bit. Broughton couldn't finish. Well, and this is where you see the experience right here at Perez. We've had a couple of empty possessions. We've got to get a good one right here. We're going to execute in the half court. Looking to go inside. Coming to the backside. Kinane has tripled. Got to get it there. That's right. Good look. Perez couldn't get it. Kinane battles inside and a jump ball. Possession arrow will give it to Florida when we come back. A little sloppy right now. Seven straight points scored by Florida as the Gators trying to hang around here in Raleigh. A couple moments ago, a freshman for NC State, Isaiah James, tried a step back three pointer. She was just about out of bounds. And like, well, oh, Westmore's not going to like that one. So as that timeout was called, he grabbed his freshman and just like, yeah. <laughs> class is always in session. That's right? right. It's a good teaching moment. Good teaching moment. Again, she had the shot off the catch. And if you're taking it in rhythm, it's one thing. But the step back three, not what Westmore wants. You can see it's really quite the challenge for so many of these coaches, including Westmore and NC State, to incorporate freshmen with transfers, with players who have stuck around for a COVID year. There's so many coaches around the country who are trying to navigate. All right, I, I've got how many kids dressed? I've got right. one basketball. How are we going to make this work? So many kids dressed. And when you're recruiting, you're not recruiting anticipating players staying for an extra year because of COVID. When you're transferring, you're not anticipating you know, players staying an extra year for COVID. So it really is a tough balancing act, and it's, it's a lot about – managing managing egos, managing expectations. But like Elisa Kunain, uh, Jakia Brown-Turner told us today, we have to sacrifice for our team. We have to sacrifice to get to where we want to go, which ultimately for NC State is the Final Four. Now that's hard for some players to do because if you know Kunain's played at a high level and there's no question she's scored her share of points, now it's about winning a championship. But for some players who have like, well, I've, I've waited my turn and I, I want to play, I want to score, I want to I want to be a part of it all. And trying to put that individual piece aside for a team piece is going to be a challenge for some of these teams nationwide. It, it is. It's going to be tough. It's going to be a balancing act, and it's a long season. And after coming off, you know, last season, which was which was so unique, and, and being able to put some of those things aside for an ultimate goal is, is an important part of what a coach is doing right now. NC State had missed six field goal attempts in a row before Kunane hit. When you see Kunane and Jones going right back to the rim. Moore all the way at Kunane. Crutchfield. That's a three. And again, what a good decision by Perez. She didn't take a contested shot. She backed it up, and then she got a great shot for a teammate. Who is great from outside the three-point line. She is four for four this afternoon. You can see just the hesitancy by Lavender Briggs. No She's someone who would come off of those middle screen and rolls and attack the basket. Instead, she's settling for a three to beat the shot clock and knocks it down. Well, Florida will take it. They've been struggling from outside the three-point line. Two for nine before Briggs knocked down that three. She's got seven. And a foul called on Rimdahl. Busy Friday coming up on the ACC Network. Two volleyball matches in the afternoon, two men's hoop games at night. Towson and Pittsburgh will get the hoop going at 6, and then Coach K and ninth ranked Duke will host Lafayette at Cameron Indoor, all games right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app, one app, one tap. Just so 
great to see, you know, watching here the South Carolina game against NC State in a full house. We've got a good crowd here today. Great just look. seeing people at Cameron Indoor again or games yes. at North Carolina, you know, you just it was great to see basketball last year, but to to get that full experience with the crowd and the traditions is something I didn't realize we missed so much. You know, just being here courtside with you, Steph, you know, is is the energy. really cool. Yeah. I mean, you just can't re pleasure. recreate the energy of what it's like to have fans in the stands. Today well, now knocking down threes. She's got 14 first half points. And we talked about it in the open. Important for NC State to establish her, get her in a rhythm, and they've done just that. Dutes got stopped by Jones, but a foul called on Kayla Jones. Well, I love this action right here with Johnson finding Kanae, getting to the rim, getting an easy bucket. And then when you have some confidence, you step outside and you knock it down. Kanae was 0 for 1 from outside the three-point line in the first two games of the season. She is someone who has been very good from outside the arc, 41% in her career on threes. And good defense by Kanane to block Duke's shot. Well, it feels like, to your point, Kanane has done it all here in the first half for NC State, but she hasn't had to be the only one to do it all. We've seen Crutchfield knock down shots. We've seen the work by Johnson at the point, and Perez sharing the basketball. It's been good team effort here for NC State. Johnson with four to go on the game clock. Jones to beat the buzzer. I was saying something about everybody contributing right. something for That's NC right. State. I think Kayla Jones just provided the exclamation point. Great patience by NC State. We want to get the last shot, and Kayla Jones so instrumental in, in everything that this team does. Knocks down the big three. Good patience, good poise, the rainbow arcing three. Sometimes it's better when it's contested, right? Get it off, it goes in. NC State pulling away. percent from the field in the first half. The fifth ranked team of the country has a 48. They're, they're really good when they can extend in the full court on the defensive end of the floor. They've played a little token zone pressure. I would expect Florida to pick up their man-to-man -man pressure full court, try to get some easy buckets, try to fuel some turnovers. Different look in the starting five here for the Gators as Manu De Oliveira will get the start here in the second half. Faith Dute out there as well. So it looks like Jordan Merritt not in the starting five. Merritt in the first half played 11 minutes, was one of four from the field. Three of those four attempts were from outside the three-point line, had just three points. Just look at the way NC State off the ball is really sitting on the paint. They're forcing Florida to put the ball up from the outside. Crutchfield. Perez, little stutter step, maybe nice. had the opening, but waits for her teammate to cut. And after all that, Perez will knock down the two. Four points for Perez. Florida's really got to get the ball moving on the offensive end. Attack the, gl uh, the glass like that, but certainly get more touches. It's one or two passes, if that, and trying to get a shot. They got to get the ball moving side to side. Double double now for Elisa Kunane. That's her 10th rebound to go along with her 14 points. First double double this year, 26th of her career. Uh, I like this five out look that NC State's given. All right here's the double on ball, but really opening up the paint, opening up driving lanes. Uh, tough pass for Kunane to handle, delivered by Jones with the shot clock winding down. That's one Jones would like to have back. You have the mismatch down low. You want to be able to deliver that, execute. Christina Moore on the floor for Florida. Ricards leans in, can't get it. 
Briggs, second chance here for Smith. Got her. Oh. Missed Perez, her on the catch. Perez still worked it in, and then a three-second violation as Cunane was in the lane for a little while. That's where the timing, really anticipating that seal. Cunane did a great job of posting for the next pass. Briggs trying to work on Crutchfield or stood her ground. And then off of the leg of Briggs, or no, off NC State, so it'll be Florida ball, 11 to shoot. Ricards will trigger the inbound for the Gators. Duke turns inside for two. Six points for Faith Duke. Nothing's coming easy for Florida. Nope. And one of the <laughs> things they need to do offensively is they got to get some more ball reversals. They're playing on one side of the floor. NC State's really able to load up. Good D. Florida gets a stop, and they look for Kiki Smith. Tracked it down and got the two. First points of the second half for Smith, leading Florida with 12. That floater's her shot. It sure is. She's really good at she's that. She's got a floor. lot of shots. She's, she got a lot of, she's got a lot in her toolkit. But that floater has been one that we've seen her drop time and again during her career with Florida. Florida picking those up. those quick hands. And, and Florida's picking up the defensive intensity. Look for NC State to try to get a backdoor action right here. We saw them working on it in shoot around today. But you really see an Duke easy dunk Duke inside. inside. Six points for Faith Duke. Creating a turnover, getting it right there. Kiki Smith, you said getting in her bag. Is that what you said? Yeah, toolkit. Oh, toolkit. Yeah, toolkit. Okay, yeah. all right. Bag of tricks, toolkit. Yep, uh -huh. I mean. Jones defended by Moore. They work it back inside to Kunane and Dukes. You know, Steph talked about it before. Point of emphasis, this is something that is not new. This is something that was brought in a, a couple years ago, but officials have been reminded, look, you know, freedom of movement has to be allowed here. You've got to watch how the contact is, and these things are going to be called a little bit. But certainly in the early part of the season, you wonder if it's going to continue all season long. No question. When you're talking about one hand, two hand touches out on the perimeter, displacement inside, great look. Kunane rolls to the basket for two. NC State's been able to score on that screen and roll action all night long. Florida has to get a rotation. Nobody coming over to help. The cards. Take it away by Brown Turner. Jones. Smith, tough shot. Crutchfield gets called for the foul. Kiki Smith is so good driving down that lane line. And you no, know, she, she has said time and time again, until you stop me from going left, I'm going to keep going left. So the grad student from Maryland will head to the free throw line to shoot a couple. SEC second team selection a year ago, 19 points a game. Three and a half assists, six and a half rebounds. Led the team in assists and in rebounding. This is generally a good rebounding team because the guards get on the glass with Smith leading the charge. A reminder what's coming up on Friday, a couple of volleyball games in the afternoon, a couple of hoop games at night, closing out with Lafayette and Duke at Cameron Indoor. Coach K's team going up against the Leopards, 8 o'clock Eastern time Friday on ACCN and the ESPN app. So Crutchfield will check out. 
She has two fouls. Brown Turner with a couple of fouls. Faith Dute with three fouls for Florida. And here's Florida coming with the man-to-man -man pressure that we're so used to seeing them bring. They hadn't brought it yet in this game, but backing off. There's going to be a backdoor opportunity. Florida really getting out on the, on the perimeter, denying those passing lanes. That's a good post-to-post -post action. Kinane forces it up, gets it to drop. That post-to-post -post really looking to force Florida to switch, getting a smaller big on Kinane, getting her easy buckets. Christina Moore will launch a three. Good job by Talia Weish. Second chance here for the Gators. Smith looks to weave through traffic. Pulls up instead, and Jones has the rebound. Perez off the window for two. Well, if your on-ball screen defense is set up to show as Diamond Johnson gets a steal down there, can't convert, if your on-ball screen defense is set up to show, you've got to force her into it, and they did not do that. But all day long, NC State has been able to exploit the two-man game, and Crutchfield does such a good job of drawing two defenders, delivers the pass on time, Kanane knocks it in. Scoring 21 points total in her first two games. Elisa Kinane has found her rhythm here this afternoon. 18 points on 7 of 10 shooting and a double-double her first this season. Wincy well, State's really made it a point to get her some touches, but not just getting her touches on the block, getting her touches off the move. And she's done her due diligence on the offensive glass, getting second and third opportunities as well. Camille Hobby into the game right now for NC State. Briggs shut off by Hayes, and Briggs dragged the pivot foot. Good job by Madison Hayes. You know, it's going to be interesting to see how players like Madison Hayes, who had some really good minutes last year for Mississippi State, now transfers in. How are these transfers and freshmen going to be able to make their mark or find their way? And for a player like Hayes, it could be coming in, playing hard on defense, getting some turnovers, bringing a little energy, and then the offense may flow after that. Well, one of the things about Madison Hayes is she just has such a high motor. She's always competing, always playing hard, and you know, Wes Moore really likes that, and to try to be able to reward her with more minutes, but she's got to find her role with an established team, and, and sometimes that's defending and rebounding and just being somebody who does the dirty work. SEC All-Freshman team a season ago. We're getting back into this five out, opening up some driving lanes. Over to Hayes. Genesis Bryant into the game for NC State. Four on the shot clock. Hayes was running out of real estate. Johnson tried to flip it up, and Florida comes away with it. Before that sequence, NC State shooting 53% from the field. Florida 31% from the field. That will drop for three for Ricards, her first field goal. It's one of the few times offensively we've seen Florida really make the extra pass. A lot of things trying to happen off of the ball screen, off of, off of creating for yourselves, and continuing to, to really work on offensively. Finding the extra pass is going to be important for Florida moving forward. Ace. Hobby couldn't get it. Another stop for the Gators. So Florida trying to climb back into this one. Three minutes to go in the third quarter. Hobby right there just waiting. And there's the rotation. Moore got there and the foul called on Johnson. A really good ball movement right here. Lavender Briggs and then the extra pass, and Ricard's able to knock it down. And when you're a team who, who runs a lot of ball screen offense, sometimes you can get tunnel vision. Sometimes you can pound it too much. As soon as you draw two defenders, you got to find that next pass. And sometimes it's two passes later like that before you get the shot. 
The cards fouled by Johnson. That'll be the third team foul on NC State this quarter. Before the shot, so it'll be Florida ball on the baseline. Here comes Kai Crutchfield back into the game for Johnson. Briggs for three. Hayes gets on the floor. Knocked out of bounds by Florida. It'll be NC State basketball. Briggs wasn't alone getting on the floor. Madison Hayes. Briggs fighting for it. Moore fighting for it. Remind you that the huddle is on every Saturday. Jordan Cornett, Eric McLean, E.J. Manuel, Mark Richt. They'll have everything you need to know about ACC football, all the news, all the previews. That's at 10 a.m. Eastern here on ACCN and the ESPN app. One app, one tap. Dry Warren, freshman, comes in for Florida. Florida down by 21 at halftime. They were down by as much as 23 here in this quarter. And there's the first hoop for Jakia Brown-Turner, which sounds kind of odd to say considering she's their leading scorer through for the first two games this season, but... Not even just the first hoop, the first shot attempt yeah. by Jakia Brown-Turner. And that just really speaks to the depth and the balance of this NC State team. You really can't focus on one or two players as Ricards knocks down another three. Because any night, one or two can step up. Any night, one or two are going to show out. Ricard's finding the shooting touch in the early going this season. Now five for seven through three games from outside the three-point line. Moore needs help. Gets it from Rimdahl. Nice. Got to get a little quicker. It's a good look. Hobby had time to recover, knock it out of bounds. Gil Levera will come back in for Florida, and Kayla Jones checks back in for NC State. Reminder, Kayla Jones not at full goal yet after suffering the injury in the first round of the NCAAs in the spring, really trying to get her back in the flow. This is game number three for her, of course. Made her first start since the injury against Wofford. Last time out, ended up with team-high 15 points playing on a minutes restriction, so really trying to figure out when and how to, to utilize her best as Ricards starts heating up a little bit for Florida. But you've got Kayla Jones, you've got Jada Boyd, who's not playing, who's, who's injured. Hopefully they will get her back in December, but both at that quote-unquote four position. And Westmore talk about, talked about really trying to build the depth and utilize in a smaller lineup. Back into Hobby. Hobby turns with the left hand. That won't drop. It's a good repost to get it back into Hobby, but NC State a little bit stagnant right now on the defense or the offensive end of the floor. And if you're Florida, you want to keep feeding Ricards because she has eight points in this quarter. That one won't drop. Final minute of the third. Crutchfield tried to track it down, and NC State. Getting a little sloppy here as Bryant threw it away. And another teachable moment. You know, Westmore talking to Bryant. We want one shot. We want to get the last shot of the quarter. So Perez comes back in along with Cunane. Ricards. He stays ready for her because the cards look like she wanted to take that last shot, so Dale Levera has to hoist it up. Well, Florida ended up outscoring NC State 14-10 in that quarter. Still some work to be done down by 17 as we head to the fourth in Raleigh. Well, you can see Florida has a new addition to their coaching staff, someone that you know quite a bit, Steph, as you take a look at the story of the score. NC State won for their last eight in the third quarter. Ricards at eight points. That's Julie Plank, who's yes. on the bench now for Florida. Julie Plank brings experience to Kelly Ray Finley's staff. 
It's been a long time at Stanford, 10 years at Stanford, two national championships, then in the WNBA. I played for her in Indiana. Nice to see Julie back on the sidelines. Now, you were telling me before, she taught Tamika Catchings everything, everything Tamika knows, knows about basketball. Okay, knows. I just want that because I know Tamika's watching, so That's she, right. she'll, I'm sure my phone will start buzzing any minute now. Like, well, not everything I know. <laughs> <laughs> There's that uh, backdoor cut that we were talking about. Florida really looking to get aggressive on the defensive end, and NC State takes advantage. Rimdahl back to Ricards. I mean, the NC State's showing so Crutchfield. early. Good job by Crutchfield on the deflection. You see Coach Plank, just a portion of her resume. She just brings so much experience to, to this young staff that Kelly Ray Finley has and experience to this team. You know, so many players nowadays really want to play at the next level, and, and, and Julie certainly understands what that takes. Kadane. Great dive. Oh, great dish by Kadane. She'll get the assist at that to her total, says Jones finishes it's just movement without the ball you see the double team comes that's a great read by Jones to dive and Kunane being able to deliver the pass second assist for Kunane to go along with their 18 points and 12 rebounds they're gonna run that again and they're gonna get the backside three Rimdahl launches a three knocked out of bounds by NC State Florida will have it Smith Briggs and more coming back on for Florida. Here you see the double and Kayla Jones, a great job of reading it. Late rotation by Florida gets him an easy two. Smith, the Kiki floater won't drop this time. And the rebound for Brown Turner. Jones was able to track that one down before it went out of bounds. Skip. To Jones, wide open for three. Ball gets moving side to side. A couple of paint touches. You get him over rotated, that skip pass is there all day long. That's another assist for Kanane. Three and double figures now for NC State. On top by 24. You know, we had a slow third quarter. Westmore comes back with his starters, wants to get a little punch of energy as Kiki Smith knocks in another, another floater. 16 now for Kiki on six of 13 shooting. NC State scored the first seven points of that fourth of the fourth quarter before Florida got the hoop. More with the boots. Faith Dutes will come back in as Tonders will check out. Crutchfield was fouled, and she'll go to the free throw line. Well, Crutchfield is four for four from the three, so you, you've got to be able to get out there. You certainly don't want to foul a three-point shooter. Well, you can't get hit by those screens. If you're guarding a player like Crutchfield, who I, I believe is six for six in the last two games from the three-point line, you, you cannot get hit. you got to get on her hip. you got to chase. you got to force her to run off of the three-point line, put the ball on the floor. You are correct. She is six for six, four for four today. Was two for two in the win against Wofford last time out. Three free throws here as Crutchfield missed the first. A reminder, Saturday morning, we're getting down to the nitty gritty in college football season. It'll get you ready on the huddle starting at 10 a.m. Eastern time here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. I think in these parts, the, the less I say about what happened yesterday in college football, the better um, after what happened at Wake Forest. So we're just going to keep moving. It's a new week, NC State. It's a new week. 
You have a top five women's basketball program. <laughs> it's great to have the fans back in the stands supporting them. Yeah, it was tremendous to watch that Tuesday evening game, the season opener against the number one team in the country. Just such a great atmosphere here. Corner three is good for Brown Turner. Yeah, you could feel the energy through the television I mean, watching oh, yeah. that game. It was, it was incredible. And, of course, ended the season with a few sellouts last year and, or two years ago. And, of course, I mean, can't wait for the annual Play for K game. Yes. February 7th it is this year where they'll – have this place packed. Timeout called by Florida. We'll take it as well here in the fourth. Westmore working down the bench. A little smile on his face. He said he wanted to have a little bit more fun. It didn't look like he was having much fun at times in the first half against Wofford. And he'd love to be able to celebrate number 750 if NC State is able to put this one away. That's a nice, look, that's, a, that's a big number. That's a big number. Holy I mean, smoke. He has had success everywhere he's been. Sure has. And and look, that's what a coach's face who's having fun looks like right there. The the intensity. We'll, ha we'll have fun afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> the fun is in the win. That's right. Jessica Timmons is into the game for NC State. Another one of the freshmen getting a chance. Florida going back to that 2-3 zone. Well, here's Timmons, open look for three. How about that for the freshman? Had seven points in her collegiate debut on Friday. All from the foul line, so nice yep. to be able to knock down a shot. First field goal for her and then lost out of bounds. Last touch by Florida. You know, Florida really trying to buy some time here for Lavender Briggs to become Lavender Briggs again. If you obviously scouted her tons of time, had to come up with ways to try to stop her, and it's hard to do. Diamond Johnson knocks down the three. But she just does not look like she's got that step yet for Florida. And you hope she's able to get it before too long as she's pulling up here for the Gators. Followed her miss, and she'll get the two. First yeah. points of the second half. And it's one thing for, for a player like Lavender Briggs to, to not have the explosiveness or not have the lift, um, but the timing yes. and the rhythm. And, and you, you can't duplicate that if you can't practice. And, and so for, for somebody like her to really be able to get the reps in practice is important. But she's also a dynamic scorer. And whether she's hitting or not, you know she can get hot. And, and so for Kelly Ray Finley, having to balance the lack of practice with how much you play in the game is 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 a tough balance. And you see the junior, second team all-conference last year, played in 18 games, averaged better than 19 points a game before the foot injury on February 15th. After dropping 41 on Arkansas. Against Arkansas. At the time of her injury, I remember, I, I wrote down the note, they were just outside Charlie Cream's, in Charlie Cream's bracketology, just outside the NCAA tournament field. And, and she goes down with the injury and such an important part of everything that Florida does. They were unable to get back on track. Foul called there, it comes with 4.56 to go in the fourth quarter. Timeout on the floor, NC State in control on their way to win number two. Expected from Elisa Kinane and we saw today a complete game leading NC State. Yeah, it was important for the NC State to get her touches early. They got her some easy looks. She stepped out, knocked down the three-point shot as well. I like how she got her touches in this ball game. She's getting it off the screen and roll. She's getting it off of moving without the basketball, attacking off the bounce, crashing the offensive glass, being able to find different ways to score and easy ways to score for Elisa Kune. 18 points, 12 rebounds, four of those 12 rebounds on the offensive glass, seven of 10 from the field, and three assists to add in as well. De Oliveira has it knocked away, and here comes NC State Hayes. A 
Another three splashed by Jessica Timmons. She gave the little jab, got her defender off, and knocked that down. Well, Timmons is known as a three-point shooter, competitor. First points for Zippy Broad. Go ahead, Steph. And we, well, we've talked about, you know, the, the challenge that Westmore has, and he, he's a number 12 ranked class in the country, freshman. You know, two transfers in Diamond Johnson and Madison Hayes. They got a lot of playing time at their respective schools before now. And, and how do you fit them all in? How do you keep everybody happy? And games like this give you an opportunity to get them some experience, to get them a, a rhythm, and to find what their role is going to be within this team. I guess, and we talked about it before, winning is how you keep everybody happy, especially if, if you're a team that was a number one seed heading into the NCAA tournament last year. There was talk of making a, a ring signifying that they had been to three straight Sweet 16s, and the player said, we, we don't want any of those mm -hmm. kind of runner-up right. type rings. We want something that we could still play for, and that's getting to a Final Four, taking that next step so you know these experienced players, this core group here, is, they've got that winning. They've got that team mentality. You see what happened last year, 22-3. and three, They beat South Carolina, but ended up losing in the regional finals to a very good Indiana team. They'll have a rematch with Indiana, by the way, coming up in just a bit. But oh, And Westmore talked about, you know, that, that Elite Eight loss, or that Sweet 16 loss to Indiana. So we just have to be tougher. You know, we've got to be tougher, and, and, and that, even that taste in their mouth it is why a lot of these players decided to come back. They want to make it to a Final Four. They understand the big picture. But you also can't overlook what's right in front of you. Taking it one day at a time, taking it one game at a time, continuing to build their depth at each position is, is important. As Madison Hayes gets a bucket right there. Her first points of the afternoon. And I really think as you take a look nationally, it, there are so many teams with so much talent. We saw here with South Carolina in here the other day. UConn opened their season with a win against Arkansas. Paige Beckers had 34 points as James comes through with her four points in the second half. She's got four. Stanford, a team to watch. Maryland, a team that's got a lot of firepower back. You can go on and on. There are so many teams with so many familiar faces who have returned and then some interesting additions that like trying to handicap the field and who's going to be in the Final Four. I know we're in November. That's what's going to make games in November, games in December, these non-conference games, let alone the conference games, so exciting because there's going to be so much premium on getting wins and trying to be a team that's going to be a number one seed in the tournament. There's no question about it. You, you have to win the games that you're supposed to. You have to prepare yourself to take that next step. Broughton at the free throw line. A reminder coming up on Friday, closing out our quadruple header day on ACC Network. A couple of volleyball matches, men's basketball, double header with Towson taking on Pittsburgh, and then Duke at Cameron Indoor taking on Lafayette. That's coming up on Friday here on ACCN. Warren and an offensive foul taking the charge was Genesis Bryant. No, that's something that if you're Westmore, you're looking for ways where players can contribute. It's a 31-point game, and you've got a player taking the charge. That's always a good thing. That's a great sign. It's a player who wants to be on the floor. And and Genesis Bryant, another player that, that Westmore is really, really high on. And, you know, get, getting back to your point, the parity in, in women's basketball is at an all-time high. You, you have to be ready to play day in and day out. And what I love about what we've seen already in this young season is we've seen top-notch competition early. Not only NC State, South Carolina, Arizona, Louisville, we've got you know Texas and Stanford. I mean, we're, we're seeing these, these top matchups early and, and love to see it in, the, in this game. You could see, too, a week from tomorrow in the Bahamas, you could see South Carolina, UConn, if things play out the right way in that tournament down at Atlanta, it's the battle for Atlanta. So that, that's not even on anybody's radar right. yet because it's like, well, there's UConn took on Arkansas today and South Carolina was in South Dakota right. this weekend and they just played NC State. Yeah, everywhere you turn, there's another great game and it's going to be that way all season long. And Westmore will 
not be happy about everything. <laughs> I, I, I love, you know, they, they beat Wofford and they, they did some good things against South Carolina, but I love he told us this week when he was at Chattanooga, they knocked off Tennessee. Now, when you're coaching Chattanooga and you beat Tennessee, you've done something. That, that That's a pretty big moment. And the team was feeling great about themselves until they came out of the film room the next day. And, you know, he was pointing out all the things that they didn't do right against Tennessee. Like, did we win that game or did we lose that game to Tennessee? But that's when you've won 749 games, you've got to find the little details to build on and try to improve on. That's right. And, and, and coaches, while, yes, you want to celebrate the victories, you're always looking for the next one, right? And you're always looking at what you can do to make your team better. And, and th this journey is about being the best team that they can be in March. It's about putting the best product on the floor every single day. It's about a level of expectation. NC State is going to continue to have a target on their back every night. And they have to be prepared to be consistent. And he talked about McDonald's French fries, right? It's about McDonald's <laughs> yes, French fries. Can, yeah. No matter where in the world you go, they taste the same. We need to be French fries, McDonald's meaning, meaning French fries. You've got to be consistent. You've got to be any night. Day in, day out. I love that reference. Final minute here in Raleigh. 11 different players have scored for NC State, led by Canaan's 18 points. NC State will host Towson here tomorrow to close out the preseason WNIT. Bench is ready to go crazy as Sophie Hart could score her first collegiate points. Walking away with a little wry smile. Towson came in here and beat Florida on Friday. Leah Nelson set a Reynolds record with 39 points. Also had an eight rebounds and eight assists. Towson shot the ball so well. 12 threes. They were on they were contested shots too. <laughs> now Florida gets Wofford here tomorrow, then Grambling State at home on Friday. Their SEC opener is against Mississippi State on December 30th. NC State closed out the first quarter on a 14-1 run. They closed out the first half on a 6-0 run. And the crowd here at Reynolds Coliseum coming to their feet to applaud the Wolfpack. And there is a smile at the end of the game for Westmore as his NC State Wolfpack now 2-1 on the season. And he gets career win number 750. Westmore has just been outstanding everywhere he's been and that level of expectation